as we turn to the pages of your word, I thank you that this word is going to minister to us in a very fresh way to remind us of what's already done in the spirit. And you are aligning us to live the life of the spirit. And I pray that you will come forth with simplicity and with clarity and with the power of the Holy Spirit to align us to know what to do in this life. In Jesus' name and everybody say it. Amen. amen and amen and amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Now, I'm going to preach a sermon entitled History Maker. Hallelujah. Somebody say history maker. History maker. Turn to your neighbor and say you are a history maker. You are a history maker. I am a history maker. I'm a history maker. Hallelujah. Amen. And by the end of the service, probably we shall know what that means. When you say, I am a history Amen. maker. Glory to God. Because I believe every one of us is supposed to write and make history. Hallelujah. We don't want people to make history like, say, as and when the whole season unbeaten. Don't mind about yesterday's results. Hallelujah. The whole season what? And that's history. That's why they call them the mighty, the Arsenal. You cannot say, you, 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 you can't say the mighty Manchester because they've never done that. You understand? Hallelujah. And when they do it, they won't be the mighty because we're the first. You understand? That far back, what are and there are people who are going to break that thing, by the way. There are people who are going to go through the whole season, what? And beat it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So your history. You listen, man, bone mouth, man, what? Glory. History maker. What does that really mean? Glory. Because we are supposed to write history. Psalms 139, verses 15 and 16. And I'm going to read the contemporary version. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Nothing about me is hidden from you. Okay? Nothing. The psalmist is saying about God, Nothing about me is hidden. You can be a hypocrite, but that God sees everything. So he knows the heart. He knows why you give. You understand? He knows why you talk like that. He knows there is nothing. There is no thought that you can hide from God. He's saying nothing. So every thought, every thought. Now this is very important. For you to you see, Moses looked right and looked what? Left. He didn't see anyone. Now Kolach. But had Moses looked up, would he kill? So many of us are you understand what I'm saying? And good enough you can send me where you are. He can send me where are you? Uh, then you'll be busy trying to come late for, for doing nothing. That's something that has already passed. You understand what I'm saying? Now, to show, nothing about me is hidden from even me. Hallelujah. Hey, by the way, I told you. Anyway. <laughs> hey! Now, that, now they're very disappointed. <laughs> they're very disappointed. <laughs> I was secretly woven together deep in the earth below. But with your own eyes, you saw my body being formed. God was seeing your body being formed. That's a substance. Hypostatis. Walk with me because we're going to write a story here. So God was seeing when your body was being formed. That's why somebody said, I have come in the body you prepared for me. That, past, that God was seeing Adrian's dark body. Eh? So when somebody comes and tells me, 
God already like before God like that one is a, that's perfect for Adrian. Can is a But God was like, I saw that body being formed. Why are you getting angry when somebody calls you? So if you have a big nose, receive it. Physical, eh? not spiritual. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If your lipstick is receive it. That one didn't form. Anyways. Even before I was born, listen, now I'm getting to the point. Even before I was born, you had written in your book everything I would do. Ah! Before planet was born, God got his pen and God got his book and what? He started to write about planet. When it's one year, he wrote. When it's two years, he wrote. Up to five years, he wrote. Up to the end of your life, he did what? He wrote. Now, do you know that God already has and knows what you are meant to do? Does that mean that when you come on the earth, you live as you want to live, or you live according to what's already written about you? Eh? If God said on 2024, you're going to be in Nakapiripiri, and you find yourself in Seta, are you in the will of God? But you are praying, you're submitted to Pastor Adrian, you're winning souls, but are you in his story? I'm asking, are you in his story? Mbuza. Neda. So you can actually preach the gospel. You can win souls. And God is saying, that's not what I called you to do. And I, I, can't, I can't record it. Are you seeing how serious this thing is? That if you want even to get married, you take it serious. That if you want to be planted in a church, you take it serious. That if you want to shift and go to where you get it, you don't just shift. You take it serious. That I, all that I want and I desire to be is I want to be in that story that he wrote before the foundations of the world. Huh. Glory to God. That's why you don't go to and I can come back to Sabah Bawa. Those are not prayers you should ask God for. God, where am I supposed to? Some of you, that's your answer, can save the Lord. Although you pray like that, not just say, God, where am I supposed to be? One week, the answer, it's okay. One, two weeks, three weeks, six months, turn up answer. Believe me, stay there. Because you could be in a job where God hasn't called you to be. Am I making sense? You could actually end up in a relationship where God hasn't designed for you to be. Oh, my child, now put, now tabuk. You know that the Holy Spirit will change him. Jamu chusa, or jamu chus. Where one dika story ye? And I know much chus. E ya one dika story ye. Teacher, the one who saw that person being formed and who has written. So your perfect prayer for your wife is say, Father, open my eyes that I may see those things that you wrote about my. Then the modern, you say, oh, shakapaka, tali, brand. I'm not sense, but I haven't started preaching. So God show me my own. I can sit and I know that this is my own. Hallelujah. Because I have prayed and God has what? Show it to me. Amen. Is that making sense? That you could end up marrying a church no, God is not in it. Then you went to church and the pastors prayed for you. Hallelujah. Amen. And the pastors prayed that you outside. Hallelujah. Those are problems of, 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 of thinking that you can only help it put in order by breastfeeding. Hallelujah. Anyway, so can I say that even before you were born, 
God had written in your book. Listen, Agamba, your what? So, Oinakatabu. Oinakatabu, right? And God just goes and opens and says, Susan. You're in the wrong church. <laughs> and Susan is like, Rakapa, Isapa, Lekapa. Susan, you're in the wrong church. Then we go there, he opens the book. Susan is with just uh, uh, Emperor. <laughs> and God opens the book and says, But Susan, I got for you. Your chapati guy is there in Agapiri. Who's going to love you very much with this chapati? You understand what I'm saying? So you could actually come, you're welcome, and you're in a wrong place. Am I really making sense? Somebody said, God help us. Even before I was born, you had written in your book, in your book, everything that I would do. Hallelujah. Baby, baby come here. Baby, come here. This is my baby. This is my baby. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Guys, you're welcome. So it's possible. So if, he says, even before I was born, you had written in your book everything that I would do. So if I'm believing God for a wife, or I'm handling a wife, God opened my eyes that I may see what God has written concerning Sharon. Somebody say history maker. Those that have come where the sermon is called history. So, before I was born, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 4 and 5, just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world. So God chose you before the foundation. We agree. We agree that he chose you before. He didn't choose you after you came to the world. He said, this one's going to be my child. He chose you before. By the way, when he chose you, he chose you before you ever sinned. He chose you before you ever did anything good. Hallelujah. That, that even when you murdered, God still chose you before you murdered. What was he saying? I'm not going to choose you on the merits of what you do. I'm going to choose you by grace. So there is no sin that is too heavy for God to forgive. So you cannot be determined by what you do or determined by what you have not done. Either way, I have what? I have called you. Am I not making sense? Yeah. Because if he had said, ah, let me first wait, and these guys come into the world, ah, this one, praise the Lord, eh? this one is planted in church. Let me choose this one. Hallelujah. Oh, you say, ah, this one, this one is, uh, ah, this one is a sinner. Ah, ah, I'll not choose this one. Hallelujah. But listen, God chose you before you were sinned. I mean, you sinned. That's a very beautiful thing for me. So he chose me by Christ. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, that he chose us and he adopted me as a word, a son. The revelation of sonship is very important. The Bible says all creation is what? Eagerly waiting for the revelation of the Son of God, that this building or this ground in Seta is just waiting for me to re have a revelation of who I am as a child of God, then the Bible says it will yield its strength to me. So all it is waiting is say, do you have a revelation of who you are? Hallelujah. Do you know that Seta yields its substance to children of God? Some things when I pray, they start disorganizing me. Hallelujah. And I realize that I've got a lot of work to do. Creation is eagerly waiting. The crocodile just wants to know <laughs> that you're the child of God. It will run. Seriously. But am I saying now go and try to test the word of God? He will be true. Wisdom. Hallelujah. Now, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm still building, okay? History makers, right? But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation. Look at that. From the beginning, before you abused. Before that thing that is this, God chose you. <laughs> but this is, this is, I don't know. I don't know if you guys are feeling it, but my spirit is so excited. That God chose me from the beginning. Huh? And if, 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 if I look back at my life in the past, 
and the things that I was doing in the past. And God says, I chose that one. Hey! That's the one that I want. Oh! Somebody say, God, I love you. Now, this is very mind-blowing. God didn't wait for me to clean up my mess, go to church, and begin to pray. And I said, now I want that one. But every time you saw me abusing people, getting angry, and lying, said that one, now. That's what I want. Am I really making sense? So when you're going to choose a wife, why do you... In... <laughs> that one's abusing people. Say, that's, that's the one I have to... Anyway. So he chose it for salvation. The Greek word, the Greek, the Greek word is soteria. Deliverance. It means health. It means prosperity. It means victory. So God chose you for victory before the foundations of the world. God chose you for success before the foundation of the world. God just looked at you and said, this one, this one is going to succeed. So does God, yesterday I was watching a football game. I, I was like, this game is going to be tight, but I was hoping that we could what? Win. But we didn't win, you understand? But I, I, now I know what happened in the game. If you tell me, give me the results of the game, I could give you exactly who's going to get a yellow, red card. Oh, you, 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 you get it, yeah? But God's selection of you is... Is, 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 is beyond. He goes to the end of things and then he says, I have chosen uh, planet. I have chosen Jenny Nebe. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, can I say this before I start going deeper? Yeah. That he, he chose us that we should be blessed. Listen. Not because he for us so. that you'll be blessed. But that he determined to bless you. God is so determined to bless you. God is so determined to increase you. God is so determined to increase this ministry. I must see from that eye. I can't see from a struggling ministry. No, I see through the eyes of God and say, God is so determined. He not only for us so that I will be blessed, but he is determined to bless you. Amen. That's just the way of God. I am determined. You understand? I am determined. Not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. So let's start by understanding that God is determined. Bless you. Now, when you enter with that mindset that God is determined, man, all things will begin to align themselves. Hallelujah. Because it shows you before the foundations of the world. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 10, the Bible says, For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life of, of, of which he prearranged. You understand? The good life. Now let's go back to again my main text to, to, to start driving us home. Nothing about me is hidden from you. I was secretly woven together, deep in the earth below, but with your own eyes you saw my body being formed. Even before I was born, you had written in your book everything I would do. So God, before I came into the world, he wrote everything in my book that I would do. You understand? So let's begin from that. So are we coming to, to figure out life? Or are we coming to align ourselves to what's already written about us. Are, are, are you getting me? Yeah. So, I am coming in that volume not to fight with life, but to align myself to what's already written. Like I said, you can be planted in this ministry and God says, but I didn't call you to a other ministry. You're supposed to be somewhere in Nakapiri, but you're preaching the gospel. You're healing the sick. And God says, that's not what I called you to do. That's very bad. Somebody said, God help us. So, here's the principle. Everything that you do has a bearing in the spirit first. Before it's made manifest in the natural. Everything must have its bear, a, a relationship. It's, 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 it, 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 it is already formed in the spirit. It's already created in the spirit. It's already written in the spirit. The life, your life is already written in the spirit. It has already happened. In the spirit. We agree? Yeah. We agree, child of God? We agree? Yeah. That everything about you 
is already written. It exists. It has a form spiritual. It has a design already. It has an end of mind before its manifestation. Hallelujah. Before its what? Manifestation. Hallelujah. So we are saying God has written in your book everything that you are supposed to do. It's already there. It's already there. It's already there. Now, this thing, this thing is very important. It changes the way you pray. It makes you take serious whom you're going to marry. It makes you take serious whom you're going to submit to. It makes you take serious which friends you're going to choose. Am I making sense? This is very important. So you don't just wake up in the morning and just live life aimlessly. God has a plan and a purpose to everything. So what you are doing is already written. Hallelujah. If it has a bearing in the spirit and it is godly, it's already written. There is somebody also on the other side trying to write another story concerning you, the ungodly, Satan. Casting visions of things that are not aligned to what God has written. And many of you don't know that Lucifer means the shining one. The one who brings light. But that light is Ignisus what? Fatus. It's a pale light. A light that misleads that he can show you something and then you say, this is gold. This is gold. And after that's not what? God. Amen. Now, many of us are living, not, not here. Many of us are walking in that Ignisus Fatus. Because he has to understand. He, he knows how God works. Because let me first cast a vision and let them walk with that vision. You look at Muslims today. That vision that Muhammad got from a certain light. Look at what is happening. Then you get out of that alignment and come and walk under that light. So in other words, God wrote about your marriage before your wedding day. Am yeah. I making sense? Yeah. It's already there. Yeah, you go for the program of what? Abanonia. Yeah, you have a program here of guys who are looking for wives. Abanonia for me, I'm Pastor Adrian. I am single. I want a woman who is rich. Yet I'm broke. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. You're asking for things that you don't have. But that's very, that's very dangerous. Eh? For me to say, guys, go to the streets and I don't go to the what? It's dangerous, by the way. If you ask for a rich person, you better be what? Rich. Listen, if you're poor, you ask for your fellow poor person. Hallelujah. Okay? So, he wrote about your success, of your ministry, of your business, the success of your children, before. It's very important. I'm building something. Can I go now to where I want? Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5. We need to learn from Jesus. The Bible says, Therefore, when he came into the world, now, we are, now he's coming into the isn't it? Just as you have come into the world. When he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you are prepared for what? For me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, carry the child out. For sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, very important, then I what? I said, behold, I have come in the volume of the word, of the book. It is written of me to do your word, will. He's saying, behold, I said, I have come in the volume of the word, of the book. It is written of me to do your will. But there's a book that was written, right? Jesus is coming in the volume of what was written. So it's not coming to, to the world to just live life aimlessly. He's coming in the volume of the other book to do the will of God. That makes sense. That means God, everything that is in that book is in line with the will of God. And the Bible says he has made known to us the mystery of his will. Do you understand? So when you come into the world, you Jesus is giving us a pattern of how we should come into the world and how we should live, that we come in that volume of what was written about us to do as well. So what's the will of God concerning your health? 
Yes, I have a pain in the body, but what's the will of God concerning your health? What's the will of God concerning raising children? What's the will of God concerning your finances? What's the will of God concerning marriage? You, you have to come with that, from that perspective and understand that you're not just, you're not just a mere being. You are something. God took his time to write. I, like, I write this book. Every month I write this thing. But it takes me time. You understand? It takes me time to come up with your bread of life for the whole month. And for you think that God just woke up in the morning and said, ta, 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 ta. no, he took time and said, this is how Adon is going to look like. He's going to be a dark person. Hallelujah. Very important. So, so, you have come in the volume of the book written of you to write what? History. Because history is his story. The story of God concerning you, that's his History is what? His story. What's the story of God concerning your marriage? What's the story of God concerning your life? This is something that we need to first have. Get the full revelation. Get the full counsel. When I entered ministry, I, I, I've learned from my spiritual father, when I entered ministry, for me, I just ended without full counsel. I just had a, a, a gusated light. Eh? And I entered ministry and things failed. Be why? Because I didn't have the full so many of us get into life without the full counsel because you just didn't come into this life. You didn't bring yourself. Somebody else created you. You understand? You're not your own. Amen. Amen. So we come in the volume of that book. Because you say, before you're born, I wrote in your book. So you come in the volume. The question is, what did God write in his book? That's why I think my life is very key and important if I align myself to what God has written concerning me. Me, I know that I'm supposed to preach the gospel. I know it. Hallelujah. Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 2, the Bible says, Ye are episodes written in our hearts, known and read of all men. So, if that means when you're reading, what do you read about? A book, right? So you are a book, right? You are a written episode. Read by all men and understood by all men. That men should understand you. Yeah. That when they look at your life, they should read you. Isn't it? Because we are moving Bible. Why am I making sense? I guess getting it. So you have written episode. Where did you write it? Glory to God. Then the Bible says, for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the episode of Christ, now I'm coming. Episode of what? Of Christ. In other words, it is Christ himself who wrote it. Now we're going back to Psalms. So when he was writing, who was writing? So can Christ look at Deborah and say, ha, Deborah is going to struggle the first three years. Are those his lines? Yet he knows that I'm, he's coming in the volume of the book to do his will, which is the mystery of his will, that by his stripes you were healed. There is a writing that will fall sick. Huh. Deborah is going to stop going hungry in her marriage. Oh my God. Let's pray for Deborah. Now you must understand the mind of Christ in writing this what? Book. Am I not making sense? Am I making sense? Picture Christ writing everything about Jenny Neville. What would he write? This is, this is very important. This is, and by the way, when you're going to pray, these are the things that should take you in the presence. What would Christ write? It says, by what? By men. So Christ himself wrote it. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 6, his letter authorizes us to help carry out this new plan of action, what Christ has written. So he's given us something that helps us carry it out. The plan wasn't written out with ink on paper, with pages and pages of legal footnotes killing your spirit. It is written with spirit on spirit. His life on your life. This is what you must write in. His spirit on your spirit. His life on your life. The very life of Christ in your child. He's writing it. The very life of Christ on your thoughts. Guys, we must understand that we are not normal people. 
Adrian, mm-hmm. what do you want to be? Ah, for me, I just, just want to go make some money, build a house, <laughs> marry. That's someone's plan. It's beyond that. And the guy sticks to only that. Hallelujah. So, listen. We don't have came in the volume of the word written about us to do God's will. Very important. Very important. Okay. That by responding to the word, we respond by faith. Hallelujah. By what? By faith concerning that which was written for us from the very beginning. So every time I read the Bible, the word of God, I'm responding by faith in that which was already, or that which is written concerning me. Now, you're going to understand the Bible very well. This is why you should always understand the Bible. So I'm responding by faith from the beginning. I'll give an example. The Bible says in Galatians 3.8, that and the scripture for us seeing that God would justify the Gentiles. The scriptures for us seeing that God would bless Adrian, preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, say, in you all nations will be. So the scriptures for us show in advance that I would be blessed. The determination of God. The scriptures show in advance that I would live a healthy life. The scriptures show in advance that I would live a successful life. The scriptures show in advance that I would be fruitful. The scriptures show in the, it, it, before that I am blessed with every spiritual. It's, the scriptures show it and came and said, Abraham, come, 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 come. Do you know that Adrian is going to get blessed? He's going to get blessed. That in him all nations will be blessed. Am I not making sense? So, yes, the scriptures form us so, but God is determined to bless you. Am I not making sense? I'll give an example. Preaching then by the scriptures was a response to what God was going to do. Preaching by the scriptures by men is a response to what God has already done. That the scriptures form us so that I would what? Be blessed. But now when I am preaching, I am preaching according to what's already done because Jesus is a fulfillment of what God was writing. So it's already what? Fulfilled. I'll give an example. Isaiah 54, 7, what the Bible says? It says that by his stripes we were healed. The scriptures for us saw in advance that a certain demon would come. The scriptures saw in advance that a certain marine spirit would come. The scriptures show in advance that a certain spirit of the enemy would come and attack me. He saw, and he was so excited that I would overcome. And wrote, by his stripes, Adrian was healed. So, when God is, when we read the scriptures, this promise is not for you to fight. This promise was already there because God saw that I would overcome. Then he says, listen, Abraham, jambu, jambu, jambu. Do you know that in, but, <coughs> no weapon formed against Adrian sure. shall prevail? He saw it. Yes, you get me. He saw it. Then preach to Abraham. So when Adrian comes, I, I come already in a fulfillment. That like when the demon comes, I don't get beaten. I don't fear. Why? Because according to my story, I overcame. You get it? I overcame. According to the story that was written, because the scriptures for us show that Adrian would overcome that demon and say, no weapon formed against Adrian shall prosper. Amen. So I come already in what was written about me to live the experience. That's why Christianity is an experience of what's already written. So every time you read the book, the Bible, and the promises, those were what was written before you were born. Because God had already said that Pastor Adrian would be attacked by this demon. And God saw that I already overcame. Then it says, by, by no weapon formed against Adrian shall prosper. Adrian is more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Adrian is above only nothing. This is what is right. He's writing from what's already done. So I come from the end.
to live the experience. That makes sense. So when you read the Bible, the Bible is eternal. It's already done. That is the story of God. It's already done. Like now I can tell what happened yesterday. I can tell with, from, from, from the place of what? Eternity. God, when he sent his word, Psalm 139, take her out. Hallelujah. I'm making sense. Do you guys get me? So why don't you love the word? Why don't you get acquainted with the word? Because every time, if, if I know that I want to find out what my life is, what was written about me, then where do I go? The Word. Because everything about me was written in that book, the Word of God. I'm not going to get the Word because I want to get a wife. I'm going there to be aligned to what's already written about me. But we don't want to read the Bible. We want to spend time listening to someone. We want it in a Nigerian movie 24-7. To get you out of the alignment. Now this should take you back. You go back and read what God is saying. Because you've come in the volume of that word to do his will. To live the experience. Am I making sense? Yeah. Abraham knew this principle. Abraham knew this principle. When God told him to sacrifice his son, the promised son, and, and, and he talked with Isaac as they were going. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 22 from verse 7, but Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, my father, and he said, here I am my son. Then he said, look, the fire and the wood. Okay, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Okay? God will provide for himself. Because Abraham, the Bible says in Romans 4.21, it was, it was fully convinced and persuaded that what God had said he would promise. He said, Isaac, look, God promised that in Isaac, thy seed shall be. Yeah? So if God has told me to go and sacrifice Isaac, that's not my promise. I want to go and sacrifice Isaac. It is his problem. Because this one that he told me in your seed, Isaac, he has to fulfill it. If he's going to raise him from the dead, I just don't care. But I know, I know that in Isaac, I see. Now, you guys think Abraham had faith. He just went because God said, no, he had the understanding of this thing that I'm talking about. Mm. Hallelujah. That when Satan appears to you in the night, you have the understanding. No weapon formed that gift shall what? Prosper. When somebody tells you, I'm going to the witch doctor, you have the understanding. But a Christian... A witch doctor, just, you understand? Eh? Pastor, pray for me. A witch doctor. You just don't understand who you are. If God has said, no, I conformed against you, shall prosper, will it prosper? No. Let God be true and every man a liar. So why would you get so bitter and bitter because somebody wants to be with you? Abraham knew it. God will raise him. So listen, you are a history maker. You have come in the volume of that book written of you to write history because history is his story the very story of god concerning your life from the very beginning hallelujah Amen. guys are quiet i do not know why they're quiet glory to god so what's the story of god concerning your marriage the two of you what's the story of god concerning my little baby sister you understand what I'm saying? What's the story of God concerning your life? Hallelujah. But we were busy praying for things that perish. We're not tuned to this, what God is saying. What's the story of God concerning your life? If you know that, you'll stop complaining with people. You'll stop fighting with people. You'll stop wasting time with people. You'll stop have, being frustrated by just anything. You'll stop crying. I mean, just nothing. Because you know that you're here on a purpose. That just one man like this can change the world. People are going to read that book of mine, the whole world. I know it. It may take me one year, it may take me five years, but it will go. It will go. 
Amen. Vans will come getting this book to take them to Mbarara schools, to go to Nakapilipita and take them. I have believed God. You understand? Because I know my story. His story is, my story is out of his one. What is your story? When people look at you, what do they say? What is your story? Is it of God? Every time you ask somebody, tell me about, let me say, let me use my name. Tell me about Adrian. And whatever they say is not of God, you have missed. So, when they say, tell me about Susan, by the way. Ha, Susan, ha, Susan has a temper. You understand? Susan has a what? That's the story of God concerning her. I'm giving an example, right? You understand what I'm saying? So, as she lived the experience, is that a story of God? Are you a history maker? What are you doing with us? Why are you known by your temper? You've come in the volume of the book in of you to show us your temper. And then we delight in temper. You understand? I want to finish to give us something that, I, that, that is very important as I close. But do you understand the principle? You, you remember Jesus when he was, when was, when was going to be persecuted, I mean to be crucified? He had an encounter with Pilate who wanted to protect him from being crucified. Remember that story? And Pilate asked him in John 18, 37, I want to show you something from Jesus who came in the volume of that book, right? Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? Brother, do you know that we are kings? The Bible says we've been made what? Priests and kings. Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am a what? A king. Then he says, for this cause I was born. I'm going back to the side before we born. Now, now, now that I'm born. For this cause I was born. And for this cause I have come into the world. Remember in Hebrews he's saying, I have come into the world. Now he says, for this cause I was born. For this cause I have come. So Jesus came for this what? Cause to bear witness to the truth, right? So he didn't just come into the world to just have fun, have a mother called Mary, uh, physical, and have, and have friends and put the call. And he came for a certain. There is something that was driving him. There was a master passion governing his life. Something was governing Jesus. Something was governing Jesus. He didn't have time to waste. He didn't have to. He didn't have time. Something was governing him. That master passion governing his life. When you have that governing your life, man, you live a life with purpose. You don't just waste it. This week, my sister visited, and you know, my, 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 my usual program is, what? Take it. But from one purpose to another, and every minute was worth it. Imagine me, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, not writing your bread of life because I read that every day. Not having my prayer moments during the day. You understand? But if I am not there, it must be something. You understand? It must be something. Because my life is guided. It's guided. If I'm sitting to watch Ashno, you may think I don't pray. You may think I don't spend time writing your book. Now, I, have, I write articles three a day, minimum. That one can take me one hour. But I have to write and I finish. That takes time. I have to pray. I have to pray for the servants. I have to plan for the ministry. I have members who are submitted very far. I have to bring them. Also. Like, see, see, now would they? So if somebody can take my Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it is purpose. Hallelujah. Let's be purpose. But for you just wake up every you know, no purpose. No goals. You just leave. But like, where are we going to get? Now we go where? <laughs> then I come, David. Oh God, you're good. You will remain there for the rest of your life. Anyone calls you, well look at you. Catch it. And guys love new things. Akapia to gain. Guys, we can't live life like that. We can't. You're going to move in a cycle and you realize you've not accomplished anything. Glory. Somebody will see those books in the future, five years, ten years, and they'll say, that man goes to 
That guy is Illuminati. Illuminati. Without seeing the sea. So don't, don't waste your time. Don't be idle. Don't get frustrated over things that don't make sense. Don't allow certain things that don't matter to get into your spirit and disorganize your peace. Somebody told me there that I, I'm going to steal their, I, I, I steal their what? Nzababa. No, I can't waste my time to go to that lady. Because that's not me. You have to pray for them. I have to figure out your kind of life for the next, you know. I have about 65 written here already. 65, I haven't even put 65 of them. Every day I'm writing. That even by the time I die, you'll have more, I'll have more, I'll have about a thousand bread of life that I've not shed. I'll tell my people, those ones who do what? Mosey is in the grave, but he's, the word is moving. Hallelujah. But that's what I'm writing. Amen. Some I'll never share. Some I'll never share. But I am writing. I'm doing my best that when they release every day, it can be 20 years, 30 years, but they're still releasing it. Now, do I have time to waste? Well, Susan has abused me. Susan, man for me, did she? That's another bread of life. Because there are those who are going to read my book. Yeah, thank you. There are those who are going to read my book when I'm long gone. But for you, they abuse you. Yeah. okay. Now, Jesus is saying, for this cause I have come. You can't stop me from being crucified. Pilate, I was already crucified. The Bible says he was slain before the foundations of the Pilate, you can't stop me. This thing, I've already experienced it. I'm just coming for its manifestation. You can't stop me. So it's already there. You can't fight it. Now, that's very important you understand because I want to close. That's very important for you to understand. There was nothing Pilate would do because Jesus was already crucified. He was slain before the foundations of the world. Then he says, for this cause I have come. So he was crucified before he was. You are blessed before you are. You are a success before you are. A success. The world can't help it. Your enemies can't help it. You're already blessed. But do you have its bearing in the spirit? Do you have the relation with in the spirit? Then begin to build a material. Spiritual. Faith is what? A substance, right? Substance is what? Material. Have spiritual material. First, because some of us are failing to manifest because we don't have what? I don't, we don't have enough material. I don't have enough material for us in your bread of life. Would I write those things if I don't have en en enough material? I have material, baby. I am deep. <laughs> I'm still writing because I have what? Material, spiritual. So how do you build material? Speak to yourself. I am a success. My child is blessed. It's okay. Keep speaking. You're building material enough to lay the foundation. And build the house. Spiritual. So when somebody calls you a thief, don't even waste time. Come back because we have the material. Lord, I thank you. My marriage is a success. My children are blessed. Everything is of God. Build material. Build material. If it's enough, you will lay the foundation. Amen. Because in doing that, you are having a bearing with the spirit. You are having a witness in your spirit that you are actually blessed. They are those, they have no 1,000 shades in their pockets, but they are certain and fully persuaded that they are blessed. They have the material. It's just a matter of time. You'll see it's manifest. That's what I'm talking about. Because it was written in your, in your book that you are blessed. So you come in the volume of that book and say, Father, I thank you that I am blessed. Last time I told you that I just spent one hour just saying everything is of God. Mm. The whole hour. My seed is of God. Judah is of God. My sisters are of God. My brothers are of God. My ministry. That's what I just said. I'm building what? Now you tell me that you, your status won't be of God? Supposing I'm not your pastor. If, if anything attacks this relationship and your faith, go find another pastor. I'm go to my higher and go to my spiritual father because he's a big guy. You understand what I'm saying? How can I say my own divorce? How many witnesses? So Jesus is saying, you can't stop this. Can I tell you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper? 
Sickness can't stop your body. It can't. It just can't. Do we have the bearing and the spirit? Because it was already written about you that divine health is your portion. Glory to God. So he forward so spiritual. Now he is determined physical. Just speak. Just believe. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is what? So is he. That the moment you think blessed, you're blessed. That's it. You think poor, you'll see. Think poor, you'll see. You th- that's what you think poor, you'll see. You find your friends who are surrounded by our poor. Because that's what you think. So the material is there. As a man thinking, so is what? For me, I think myself as a global influencer. That's why I talk so much about the world. And I've said the material is there, physical. <laughs> what you're reading there is, 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 is spiritual. Now, what I wanted to show you is this. And mark this. It's very important. When Jesus said, for this cause, to this end, remember, he went to the end of things and saw that he was crucified before the foundations of the world, right? Mm-hmm. Then he came huh? yeah. to Pilate and said, for this cause I have what? I have come, right? Mark that word. Mark it. Mark it. Now, to this end, the Greek word there is genaho. Genaho. Genaho in a Jewish sense means one who brings others over to his way of life. Hmm? When he was saying, to this end have I come. I have come to bring Sarun to this way of life. I have come to take Sarun to the end of things that book that was written, I want to show Sharon, this is how you manifest it. This is how you live it. Come in the volume of that book in Psalm 139, written concerning you, and do you his will. That's the only way. Because that's the only way of his life. He goes to the end of things. Then he comes back and takes us to that end. The end says, I am blessed with every spiritual blessing. So if I were Jesus, if I were to say, for this end, somebody can ask me, because they asked him, are you the king? Somebody asked me, hey, Adrian, you mean you are blessed? You mean you are rich? Yes, rightfully you say I am. Because for this cause I came into the world. Hey! Now you're getting it. Are you a king? He went to the end of things and he said, for this cause I was born. So they say, Adrian, you mean you are blessed? You mean you are rich? Yes, for this cause I was born. And for this cause I have come into the world. Because that's the way of Christ. Yes, I am blessed because for this cause I was born. I was born rich. I was born blessed. I was born more than a conqueror. That is what Jesus is saying. This is the only way that you can live my life. Because I come in the volume of that book written of me to do your will. Now that I have done it, follow suit. Hallelujah. So, every time they ask you, because my spiritual father says, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not boasting, but you understand. Yeah, because for this cause, he was born. Mm-hmm. Now, when the Bible says, you're more than a conqueror, for this cause, I was born. And for this cause, I have come into the world. Every Sunday, I, told you, I, give, you prayer, I give you prayer points to go and know how to pray. Father, for this cause, I have come into the world. You understand? For this cause I was born. And for this cause I have come into Remember, before you were born, he had it written. So it's ready? So can I say that this is what Jesus was saying about Genau? I have come that, uh, I have come to what? To convert you. I mean, to, 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 I've come to bring you over to that way. That's the only way you'll bring them to manifestation. That's the only way you'll manifest what's already written concerning you. Really? Because you can't help it. It also means to convert someone. So he's actually converting us to this way of life. That Adrian, all I want from you is go to the end of things and see everything written about you. That's all you need. And come back, okay, and leave to the end. Some of us are beginning from here. Am I really going to be blessed? You're beginning from the left. 
God is saying, no, go to the right. First see it. The Bible says, Moses seeing him who is what? Invisible. He first saw it at the end. Okay? After seeing it in the desert, then he came to what? Egypt and said, we are going. He didn't say, but God might take us. He said, we are going. Now, many of us would first come to Egypt, then begin praying for the miracles. But Moses first saw the miracles. He saw God parting the sea. After seeing all that, he experienced, saw the Christ, and he came. So, when he was talking to them, was he talking about the future or what is present? Present because he experienced it. Now, when you say, you've not experienced it. I am not going to be healed. I am healed. I won't be blessed. I am blessed. That is what he has come to do. So we don't speak futuristic. We speak present. That making sense. So here, we can't do this thing without Christ. You have to be in Christ. Because he's the only one who can turn you over to this life. The way of the Spirit. So do you see things from the end? Or do you see things from the beginning? That's why we give our lives to Christ. That's why we have believed this man, Jesus. Because that's the only way we can. So allow me to close. Allow me to close. I'll take us back to Psalm 139. Even before I was born, you had written in your book everything I would do. Notice he was speaking in the present, in the past. That means the psalmist was already telling God of the things that he did. In other words, already accomplished everything that you said I would do. But in Christ, it is accomplished. So, learn to go to the end. Until you see yourself blessed, nothing will happen. Whether you speak a thousand words, I don't care. Until you see yourself healed, nothing will happen. Until you see the success of your children, nothing will happen. Until you see the success of the ministry, nothing will will happen. You understand? Because it's already written. It is written of you that you are blessed with every spiritual blessing. It, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are saying. We though without the job. But if you believe that you are blessed, you won't sit. You go, you go looking for a job. If you believe that your marriage is blessed, don't just sit and say, Bananga, for me, God will work it out. No. You work and love your wife with everything because you are working from the end of things. So we work from the end. That's why I pray for us from the end. When they tell me that your father's knees are paining, I go back there and I say, Lord, I thank you that his knees are off. God. I'm going to the end of things. Hallelujah. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to remind you today, okay, that you're not here by mistake. You're not here by chance. God is determined to do what he has, what he has written concerning your life. Amen. Determined. It's determined. It's determined. That's why I've never given up in my ministry. And every day I'm learning and I'm learning, learning, because he's determined. Glory to God. Amen. When we sit here for one hour, because some, some group knows here, by, by the end of this cycle, we have to be more than 100 submitted members. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. You understand? So what I'm asking, can you just know and be like Jesus, have the mindset and say, for this cause I was born. You can't help it. 
You can't help it. And for this cause I have come into. You have come to manifest what is already in the spirit. So do, before you go for the manifestation, first understand the principle that has been given to you. This life is going to be sweet. Even when it is not working, you, know, you will know that it is what? Working. Because it has already worked. Let's begin to pray. I said something. Begin to pray. Let's say something. Say something. Say, that's why I put a